Okay, it's another webisode of The Big Three. I'm Heather Harrington. This is Will West. Will, let's dive right on in. Orange and white game comes up tomorrow. What's Jeremy Pruitt's first real live action on campus in front of a crowd going to be like? Um, people are going to enjoy it. They're going to they're going to be happy about it. Everyone's going to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. you, you know how spring games work, right? I mean, you're going to win 12 games as soon as you see the spring game. Yeah. Everybody feels good With about where it's going. <laughs> like, I don't expect us to know anything about okay. anything okay. by the time that we're there. Basic looks at what the offense and the defense look like. But as far as the way it will be received by fans, everybody will enjoy it. I'm actually looking forward to it because I honestly think we will know a couple of things. Now, are you going to know what kind of scheme they're going to run on third down or goal line or this? No, I'm not getting into that. But when you're talking about playmakers and identifying, okay, where was the talent that we heard about on Butch's team? Where are they now? I think you could see some of those guys emerge. You know, what does a Tyler Bird do? What does a Marquez Cal? way do uh, some of the different running backs that aren't named John Kelly because he's no longer <laughs> on the team I mean I'm really looking forward to seeing some development and then on the defensive side of the ball you know guys like a Micah Abernathy can we see some ball hawking mentality uh, can we see really aggressive defensive backs versus wide receiver competition I I think we'll know a little bit about the style and the identity that Jeremy Pruitt is putting into this team I, I think I, I think I feel like we we have an idea ish the big things for mm -hmm. me what does Garantano look like staying in the pocket or how much do they actually roll him out and things like that to get him moving throwing the football number two is gonna be who are the warm bodies at corner because right now, I don't think we know what that Who pecking has a order... Pulse? Yeah, we don't know what the pecking order looks like at all. So to find out that pecking order at corner is going to be pretty interesting. Because it is going to be ones versus ones, twos versus twos, yep. and so on. So we'll see. Okay, Coach Fulmer. I get... Or Athletic Director Fulmer right, now. Yes. Yeah, it's official. That's still so, Coach Fulmer. So, I know. Yeah. I still call him Coach Fulmer. Um, he signed a four-year deal worth basically a million dollars a year over the next... Uh, through 2021. Uh, what does that mean for the University of Tennessee? And what does it mean for Coach Fulmer? At least short-term stability. The biggest thing I think Coach Fulmer can do is he can back the boosters off. If you look at it, we've had uh, two presidents, three chancellors, four athletics directors in... The last few years, right? So and with the new things that are yeah, going on, yeah. the focus and all that. I Four mean, there could be coaches there could had. be even more shakeup so on the university side. The one common denominator has been the boosters. The one thing that I think that Coach Dickey did best was boosters backed off and let him do his job. Mm -hmm. The one thing Coach Fulmer can do that John Curry and Mike Hamilton could not, and Dave Hart could not, was back the boosters off and just do his job. So mm -hmm. this is the biggest thing to me. The biggest takeaway I have is one. Man, that's a lot of money for two athletics directors. But Coach Fulmer's getting less than market value. But the other side is you at least have some short-term stability. Yeah, the, all I heard while you were saying he could back off the boosters was that, back up, Terry! Back up, Terry! <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm excited. I think this does bring stability. I think it is a step in the right direction for the university. You know, I... I don't ever want to see what happened in 2008 happen again to Coach Fulmer, but I do think at the time, it's just like the Jeremy Pruitt thing, at the time with what all went down, this was the best hire the University of Tennessee could have made, and I think he's going to do a great job. Yeah, he'll do a, he'll do a fine job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and uh, to wrap it up, the Titans, the NFL released everyone's schedule. Titans get three primetime games, the most since 2009, That's including... Nice, yeah. Monday night football in Dallas. You're darn right I already circled that. <laughs> uh, but And they get a London game. How do you see the Titans doing this year? I hate the London game. Like, I hate that for them. I, I, I do think the biggest thing is that division's going to be tougher than it was last year. Yep. So I think maybe they take a step back. Eight and eight, nine and seven. I think well, it's what the Titans are looking at. I also with that think AFC <laughs> South being paired with the NFC East, you that, talk about some formidable matchups. Oh yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Dallas isn't going anywhere. Philly's the best team in the game. The Giants are going to be night and day yes. better from what they were, even though they're probably eight and eight this year. I just think it gets a lot tougher this season. Also, there will be a learning curve with Vrabel's defense. That's going to happen. Okay, so we'll see how it goes with the Titans. But if you live in Nashville or you have season tickets, you get some great oh, games. Great. New yeah. England Patriots Absolutely. coming to town. Yeah. The Super Bowl champs. 
the yeah. Eagles coming to this town. This is the best I mean, schedule from, from just an intrigue standpoint. This oh, is yeah. the best schedule the Titans have had, I think, since they moved to Nashville. Okay, now let me ask you just a random bonus question. So I guess today's the big four. Uh, went to Rural King out in Maryville, shout out, yeah. um, yesterday with Gus. Can you hold chicken still? Y- yeah, you can. It's so, and nice. We didn't get to pet the bunnies, though. Uh-huh. He really wanted to pet the bunnies. But, you know, Yeti has come out with this whole new line of stuff, and it's the colors. Now, we already have okay. all the stainless Yetis that you could probably ever need, mm-hmm. right? And they're indestructible. They're going to last forever. <clears throat> How many Yetis is too many Yetis? Because now this coral one, I'm How thinking I need that. I think, I think I need that for the lake. How many coolers? Three. Yeah, two, is, two is too many. You just need the one. <laughs> now, if you have a lot of people over, you guys, are, you guys are at the lake. So what if you have a cups? lot of people, the cups, as many as you want. I mean, for real, seriously. You can have as many $30 yeah, yeah. cups it's as like you want. It's like having 365 pairs of underwear. It just means you do laundry less. It just means you have to do <laughs> dishes less if you have that many cups. <laughs> Okay. Well, you heard it here, Hubs. I can buy the cup. Will <laughs> gave me permission because he shot it down. He was that, like, no, we don't no need another Yeti. You always yeah. need another Yeti. All right. That's going to do it for us on the big three. Chime in and uh, <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs>